Good morning, everybody. Hope you're having a great day. Got a little bit different video for you today. Long story short, as many of you know or should know, one of the things that I like to do on my channel is to promote the individuals in the Tier 2 scene, you know, whether that's interviewing them on my stream, on YouTube, hosting tournaments, pugs, activities of that variety. But one of the things that I want to do a little bit more is also shining a spotlight on the coaches, the analysts, and the other content creators working in the scene. So there was a Reddit thread a while back that kind of said that, oh, Jane is the only competitive Overwatch content creator uh, out there. And that's just not true. I may be one of the larger ones, but there are other ones. And there's a lot of great content out there uh, simply not getting any views because people don't know it exists. So I wanted to kind of uh, shine some light on some of the content creators who I think are worth your time and worth your watch. And also, well, let's be honest, I just wanted to take Christmas off. But anyway, today we've got Dividing by Zero, uh, an up-and-comer whose uh, YouTube channel has just reached 15,000 subscribers. He makes competitive Overwatch content, including discussion posts, power rankings, and things that he learned uh, from watching the most recent tournaments. And one of my favorite videos from him is when he did a What I Learned from Each Team at the World Cup. But anyway, without further ado, here is Dividing by Zero with the most underrated OWL announcement. Dividing by Zero, take it away. If you're an Overwatch League fanatic like me, then these past six months have been some of the longest of your life. After getting so much high quality content, going back to constantly pressing F5 on Twitter has been rough in comparison. However, this offseason hasn't been without its many moments. We got to watch eight new teams introduce themselves to the world. Dozens of players achieved their dream of making it to the biggest stage possible. New storylines are playing out in Tier 2 as new and veteran players alike battle to prove their worth in contenders. There was, however, a piece of news that surfaced this offseason that is a big deal. A huge deal, in fact. I would argue that this piece of news revealed in the preseason watch point is the most important news to come out of the offseason, yet it hasn't gotten nearly enough attention. What I'm talking about is the announcement that Overwatch League will have a few home games in Season 2. And I'm not talking about the Gladiators or the Valiant. I mean for the first time, Overwatch League will be having regular season games outside of LA. The Dallas Fuel will be hosting matches on April 27th and 28th. The Atlanta Rain will be hosting games on June 6th and 7th. Finally, the LA Valiant will be hosting games on August 24th and 25th. Despite the incredible effects that this could have on the league, I felt like it was glossed over in the most recent watch point in favor of talking about the new teams and players. And while I agree that those topics definitely deserve press, I am more excited about home games than I am about any new team or player in Overwatch League Season 2, and I don't even live in Dallas or Atlanta. Hopefully, by the end of this video, you'll agree with me. Since its beginning, Overwatch has been a game focused on appealing to as many people as possible. That's why the game uses bright, colorful backdrops instead of the dark, gritty color schemes of other FPSs. That's why they've put a lot of effort into making a cast that was not only diverse in gameplay, but in their personalities. That's why they try to have seasonal events with rotating game modes so that you can enjoy the game in so many different ways, and if you don't like any of those, they provide you with the tools to make your own. Overwatch tries to give everyone something to like about it. Their esports scene is no different. After all, why aren't we just allowed to call the Fuel Envy, or the Shock NRG, or the Outlaws Optic? It's because, from the beginning, it's been clear that Blizzard wanted to model Overwatch League after popular sports leagues like the NFL or the Premier League. And one of the biggest questions is, why? Games like CSGO or League of Legends have had healthy esports scenes for much longer than Overwatch has even existed. Why not just go the safe route and model your esports scene after them? It's because Blizzard wants Overwatch League to be something more. It's because they want Overwatch League to be as mainstream as possible. They want to break esports into the mainstream with Overwatch League. And to do that, localizing the teams isn't just fun and exciting and new, it's necessary. Think about it like this. One of the biggest barriers to entry in esports right now is that it's hard to get casual players invested in the teams. 
For example, in an effort to become more familiar with other games, I decided to watch a bit of the Call of Duty World League Las Vegas Open. The first full game I watched was the Losers Finals game between E United and Splice. This was a match with huge stakes, with the winners getting a chance at the grand prize while the losers were forced to settle for third. I should have been excited, hyped, but I wasn't. This isn't taking away from the talent of the players or the quality of their organizations, but I had no connections with either team or any of the players. I don't know their history. I don't know their values. Heck, I haven't even played that much Call of Duty. So the question arises, why care? In my case, there's simply no reason to. I had no emotional attachment to anything that was going on, and gaining an emotional attachment would require me to either spend hours playing the game, or spend hours learning about their esports scene, preferably both. There is no easy way to get emotionally invested into an esport, and this is a problem that the esports community has had for its entire existence, and as long as it continues to have this problem, esports will never be mainstream. This brings me back to Overwatch League and their attempt to solve this problem with localization. Even though all Overwatch League has done so far is put city names in front of team names, the effects of it have been surprising. For example, let's take a look at this tweet that ESPN made about the New York Excelsior vs Philadelphia Fusion semi-final matchup. It's just a highlight of Poco doing Poco things. While ESPN's audience is not accustomed to esports and a lot of them tend to denounce it, there was one very interesting reply that was welcome, not just because it was positive, but because it proved that what Blizzard is trying to do can work. This person has no knowledge of the teams or the players or the history or the values. Heck, he doesn't even really understand what's going on. However, he sees the word Philadelphia, and that's all it takes for him to find an emotional attachment to what's going on. This is the power of localization. It creates a way for fans to easily become engaged in the league, which means they'll buy tickets and merch, which will allow Overwatch League to expand, become bigger and better, attract more investors, put money into more teams with more cities and more advertising, which continues to grow the fan base. It's a constant cycle, and this cycle is what Blizzard hopes will differentiate Overwatch League from other esports leagues. So now that we understand why localization is so important to Overwatch League, let's go back to the announcement. The first thing I want to say is that you should be glad that Blizzard is handling this right. You see, before this announcement, we all knew that the goal was to localize in Season 3, with every team having a home arena and traveling to every other team's arenas for home and away games. However, most assumed that the League would go from no localization at all to all localization at once, which would be a huge shock for everyone involved. Having these weekends will let the hosting teams work out the kinks in their system early, it'll let all the teams get a taste of what life traveling to different arenas would be like, and if it's pulled off correctly, it will show investors that this radical idea to bring esports into the mainstream audience might just work out after all. Overwatch League is still in its infancy. While Season 1 was a great time, it was mostly a trial run, a way for Overwatch to test things out and establish itself in the esports scene. It's not even close to the vision that Blizzard has for the League five years down the line. The home game announcements are so critical because they represent another step towards achieving that vision. And even if you don't live in LA, Dallas, or Atlanta, you should be ecstatic about this. I know I am. Because when it comes to the Overwatch League, I feel like we could be witnessing the rise of something very, very special. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed it. That was Dividing by Zero with the most underrated Overwatch League announcement. Personally, I am really excited for the home games. My, my parents have already bought tickets, you know, but it's going to be a great time. I'm really looking forward to it. And just, you know, if you happen to be a fan of the Dallas Fuel, which you should be because any sane person is, uh, home game tickets are actually on sale currently. So DallasFuel.com. $35. I'll be there and I hope to see you there. But enough of that. And thank you so much to Divided by Zero for taking over the channel for the day. Thank you so much. I loved your video and good luck to you in the future. I hope to see more great content coming out of your YouTube channel in the new year and throughout the next season of the Overwatch League. I want to give a huge thank you to Jane for having me on today. If you don't know me, my name is Dividing by Zero, and I have a YouTube channel where I try to make competitive Overwatch content at least once a week, and most of the time I succeed. 
I actually just uploaded a video, it's the first part of my preseason power rankings, so if you're interested in that, I'd love it if you checked it out. I also have a Twitch, a Twitter, and a Discord server, and hopefully the links to all of those things will be in the description. Until next time, though, that's all from me. Don't get tilted.